Well, hello everyone. Welcome to my core three revision video. On this video, we're looking at what I think is the hardest topic in core three. That topic is rates of change. Now, rates of change is basically based around using the chain rule. Okay, so let's remind ourselves about the chain rule. Let's say you had y equals 2x plus 3 squared. Hopefully by now you can differentiate this really quickly. Okay, but the long way what you do is you say, well, let's call that u, 2x plus 3, because we know how to differentiate um, something squared. And when we differentiate the u squared, this is now with respect to u. I tell my students all the time how important these uh, letters are. They are needed because this tells us we're differentiating with respect to u. And we have a letter u, so that's good. So with respect to u, we're going to get 2u. Okay. Over here, where we defined u, we can differentiate and get du by dx. And when we differentiate that, we just get 2. Now, what you might have learned, that if you put these together, you can find out the differential of y with respect to x by combining dy by du and du by dx. Okay? So this equals dy by du times by du by dx. Okay, so your answer in this case for dy by dx, well, you'd have to sub u back in for what it was, 2x plus 3, but you would get um, 4, 2x plus 3 is your answer. Okay, we don't actually care about that stuff in rates of change, we care about this thing down at the bottom. That is called the chain rule. Now, if you notice what's going on, you've basically got, they're behaving like fractions. It's not fractions, but they behave a lot like fractions. Okay? You've got dy by dx, and can you see the dy by dx? And what's happening here is that the other two, you can imagine, are cancelling like fractions. Um, it's different because it's to do with them being um, inverses of each other basically the rate of change with respect to something and then you could kind of going back on yourself when you have that as the rate that you started with but all you need to know is this chain rule is going to work with any letters that you can imagine so plucking random letters out the air dw by dm you can make it up by having dw at the top dm at the bottom and whatever you want in between what's a weird letter i don't know let's say um we don't want to use d that will get confusing um i don't know a so that is the chain rule in action now the hard thing about rates of change is you also have to apply this to real situations where these letters are meaningful and stand for different things. So let's stop talking about it and let's start doing it, okay? So, first example. We've got a rectangle shown. And this rectangle, we are told, is increasing in size. Hence, we've got a change, okay? Rates of change. So it's increasing in size. Let's assume you hold down shift or whatever the short key is to uh, get it to keep the same dimensions because our dim dimensions are staying x, 3x, aka this bottom side is always three times this side, okay? So let's carry on. It's increasing in size. x is increasing at a rate of 5m per s, meters per second. You can use these units to help you realize um, what type of thing you're talking about, okay? So M is a length and S is time. So the length we're using X 
dx by dt. Okay? And that is 5. So you know that dx by dt, the change of a length with respect to time, is 5. You're told it in the question. Find the rate of increase in area. Okay? If the shorter side is 7. Rate, whenever you see rate, and it doesn't tell you explicitly, it's going to be with respect to time. Okay? Talking about rate. So, A, let's say area for A by dt is what we want. So, we want A on the top. We want T down here. And guess what other letter we're going to throw in the mix? X, because that's what we've already got. We've already got dx by dt. So, of course, this one has to be x2. This simplifies your job of just trying to find this for now. So, if we could have an expression for A, that would be really nice. What did we say A represented? Area. Area, GCSE question. x times 3x. 3x squared. Area is 3x squared. We can find dA by dx by differentiating with respect to x. And we get 6x. Okay. Therefore, dA by dt, we are going to combine dA by dx because of the chain rule. And dx by dt, which you were already given as 5. So that means dA by dt, the rate of change of the area with respect to time, is 30x. That's not the question done because it says when the shorter side is 7. This is the shorter side. x is 7. At x equals 7, you're going to be doing 30 times 7, which you can all do because 3 times 7 is 21. Let's give some units, um, rate of change of area, okay, so um, meter squared per second, respect to time. Okay, next example. Water is filling a cylindrical tank. I always like to draw a diagram to see what's going on. So let's get a little diagram drawn. We've got water filling it up. I probably should have done these colours the other way around. So now water was blue, but there you go. You live and learn, don't you? The height of the water is H. Let's label that on. The radius of the base of the cylinder is 1.6. Okay. Label it on. The water is filling the cylinder at a rate of 0.3 metres per second. I've told you, this gives you the answer in the question. Meters cubed, that's volume, dv, per second, dt. Okay, a rate, 0.3. So we already know that information. We want to find the h by dt. So we want a h up here, and we want a dt down here. Guess what extra letter we're adding this time? V, okay, using the chain rule. We already know this bit, so we just want to find this, dH by dV. Now, this is where the math gets a little bit more tricky um, because differentiating the height with respect to the volume doesn't actually make much sense. So, let's first find an area, a formula for volume, then we'll talk about it. So, volume of this is going to be a cylinder. So, you want the cross-sectional area, pi r squared, the area of a circle. Radius is 1.6. So, pi times 1.6 squared. 1.6 squared, I'll just do on my calculator quickly, is um, 2.56 times by the height. So, we've got... 2.56 h pi, or pi h is probably a better way around to, to write that, because pi is uh, always kept constant. Okay, now we can find 
dv by dh here. So let's make do with dv by dh for now. Pi and 2.56 are constants. So it's just like differentiating 5x. Okay, it just goes to 5. You just go and you get left with the constant. So you get 2.56 pi. Now, unfortunately, we did not want dv by dh, but don't worry, because you know another formula that dy by dx is a reciprocal of dx by dy, which is why the uh, chain rule works. So that means that we can use that as 1 over dv by dh, 1 over 2.56 pi. We know dv by dt, so to figure out our final answer, 1 over 2.56 pi times by 0 0.3. Let's give it as a decimal on your calculator. We're already in decimal mode anyway, so might as well go the whole hog. And you get 0 0.037 to two significant figures. And we are talking about h by dt. So meters per second. Okay. Final example. This is a past exam paper question. And let's have a look. It's very wordy. What we're going to have to do is highlight or underline keywords. Remember what I do as well? Draw diagrams. Giant spherical balloon. Let's get it drawn. Got a balloon. There's a sphere. Okay being inflated so it's getting bigger and bigger and bigger so uh, if you imagine what's happening to it it's getting bigger and bigger okay staying in proportion the radius of the balloon is increasing at a rate of 12 centimeters per hour okay so the radius let's call it r per hour time the r by dt is 12. Find the rate at which the surface area, so we need a formula for surface area. How lucky is that? Okay, we're giving it in the question because it's already difficult enough. The area is 4 pi r squared. Um, find the rate at which the surface area of the balloon is increasing at the instant when the radius is a 150. Okay, so at the instant when the radius is that, I'm just trying to think if we want um, dA by dR or dA by dt. Let's go for rate as dt. So, let's think about what we know. We know dR by dt, so we can put this in the mix. We want to know dA by dt, so this has to be dA. And therefore, this has to be dr. So, let's get down to business with finding dA by dr. Okay, let's differentiate this. dA by dr is going to be 4 pi is constant, remember. Um, so, 4 pi times by 2, 8 pi r. And dr by dt we already know. So it's going to be 8 pi r times by the 12. Okay. And we want it when uh, the radius is 150. Give your answer correct to two significant figures. So when r is 150, dr by dt, not dr by dt, dA by dt, is going to be 8 pi times by 150 times by 12. Put it in your calculator. Times pi. And it wants it as a decimal. Two significant figures. You actually get on your screen. Um, we want two significant figures. So we want 4 to 5,000 um, 
centimeters squared per hour. Okay, so it's a three marker and you can work through that quite quickly as long as you understand what's going on with these letters which links back to the chain rule and these things cancelling out. Hope that's been helpful in your revision. Most of all, I hope you can achieve maths. Good luck. <laughs>